We've seen some incredible archaeological finds happening all over the world recently, and now you're going to see them too. These discoveries come from all over the planet, and in every shape and size, but they all have one thing in common. They're outstanding. Not only are they fascinating to look at, but their stories are amazing to hear. So let's tell them! Worshipping the gods wasn't a simple matter of getting down on your knees and praying in the days of ancient Egypt. You needed special tools for the job. Tools like the ones that were found in the ancient city of Bhutto, Kafr el Sheikh, in September 2021. Egyptologists believe that the strange looking artifacts are connected with the ritual worship of the goddess Hathor. They include a small limestone pillar carved in the shape of Hathor, a vessel for holding sacred water, an offerings holder, and pieces of a set of gold scales that were probably used in gilding. The idea of ritual use is strengthened by the discovery of tin glazed ceramic incense burners at the same site. The precise nature of the ceremony these tools were used in will probably never be known, but it's likely that they were part of a daily ritual for whomever they belonged to. Perhaps the most remarkable find at this old temple is a bathtub fitted with a basic plumbing system that allowed fresh water into the tub and poured out wastewater. Yes, you heard that correctly. Some Egyptians had running water 2,400 years ago. In September 2021, Turkish archaeologists found a mosaic so significant that they're claiming it as the ancestor of all other Mediterranean mosaics. That's a bold claim to make, so let's check it out. This careful arrangement of more than 3,000 stones was found in the remains of a 3,500-year-old Hittite temple in Usakli Hoyuk. The stones have lost some of their colors over time, but they would originally be black, red, and beige shades, arranged in curved and triangular formations, thus creating the mosaic. It's about 700 years older than the oldest known floor or wall mosaic in Greece. The remains of a palace at the same site mean that this has become a candidate for the location of the long-lost city of Zipalanda. The city's name appears on many ancient Hittite tablets and was known as a place where people came to worship the Hittite storm god, but its precise location has always remained a mystery. Perhaps it's a mystery no longer. The new mystery is what inspired an ancient artist to create this mosaic pattern when they'd presumably never seen anything like it before. Archaeologists have described our next artifact as the cake mummy, although that's an inaccurate term. There's no mummy to be seen here, but there is a cake. To be more specific, it's a hazelnut cake, and it's thought to have survived the bombing in Lübeck, Germany by Allied forces in 1942. The bombing is thought to be responsible for the continuing existence of the cake. It caused a firestorm, which carbonized the cake so well that its original swirls and frosting are still visible. It was found inside a cellar in Lübeck's historic Old Town and is the only known example of food surviving the bombing. The fact it did so is a pure fluke. A cavity formed around the dessert as the house collapsed around it. It kept it safe from the fire and also prevented it from being crushed. A coffee service and documents found inside the cavity suggest that it was to be used in a confirmation ceremony scheduled for the Sunday after the bombing. We can't help but wonder what happened to the family that was supposed to come and eat it. Peruvian gas pipe workers got more than they bargained for in September 2021 when they accidentally broke open an 800-year-old tomb and found that it still contained the remains of eight people. The tomb is thought to be a Chilca culture burial. They laid their people to rest surrounded by food and their distinctive musical instruments, which helped in identifying who was responsible for creating the tomb. The semi-mummified bodies are still wrapped in the same plant material cloth they were buried in. Around them were plates full of corn, flutes, and other wind instruments. Two of the bodies had decorative shells placed on their heads, which might have been indicative of their social standing or their role within the family if, as is presumed, this is a family tomb. Curiously, each of them also had a bag full of cocoa leaves on top of them. 
The Chilka chewed cocoa leaves as a stimulant, but the dead have little use for stimulants, which makes their appearance here quite odd. A further 30 bodies were found by the same gas company close to this spot in 2018, but there's no sign that there was ever a settlement here. Humans have accessorized their bodies with jewelry for thousands of years, and throughout that time, there have been many cases of fashion being placed ahead of practicality while accessorizing. It still happens today, but here's an example of it happening 2,900 years ago. In September 2021, archaeologists opened a grave at the Askis 17 burial ground in the Republic of Caucasia, Siberia. They found the remains of a woman buried with bronze jewelry so heavy that wearing it for any sustained period of time would have been painful. Her grave is only 30 inches deep, so it's incredibly fortunate that it's never been damaged by the extensive highway and railroad construction that's taken place here over the centuries. Whoever this woman was, she was buried with lavish and extensive grave goods, including the shoulder blade and leg of an as-yet-unidentified large mammal. Other artifacts recovered include a bronze knife and a ceramic vessel with an ornamented rim. She probably belonged to the Karasuk culture. They were noted for their metalworking skill, hence the size and quality of all the jewelry. It's often said that human life began in Africa, and here's a little proof. It's a set of clothes-making tools made from animal bones, and at 120,000 years old, it's the oldest tool set of its kind ever to be discovered. The artifacts were found in Smuggler's Cave, 12 miles from the Moroccan capital of Rabat in September 2021. An expert analysis of the tools has identified that they were artificially amended and shaped specifically so they could be used to make garments from fur and leather. Based on the age of other bone clothes making tools that have been found in the past, it appears they remained the standard way of going about such tasks for more than 30,000 years. This is the latest in a series of incredible finds in the cave, which also features living spaces carved into the ground and perforated seashells that might have been used as ornaments. This isn't quite as significant as the discovery of a 1.3 million year old axe manufacturing site in July, but it at least gets us closer to the origin point of sewing. We've heard about archaeological artifacts turning up in all sorts of unusual places over the years, but this is a new one to us. In September 2021, butchers in Jackson, Mississippi, USA, carved into a 750-pound, 14-foot-long alligator that had been killed in Eagle Lake and were stunned to find two truly ancient Native American artifacts. One is a 3,700-year-old plummet stone, and the other is an 8,000-year-old atlatl dart point. The objects were in the alligator's stomach and mostly undamaged, which suggests the alligator had eaten them recently. This raises the possibility that there are several more ancient artifacts in the same part of the lake that the alligator perished in. Old dog tags have been found inside alligator stomachs in Mississippi before, but there's no recorded instance of anything like this happening in the past. The size of the dart point suggests that it was once attached to a heavy hunting spear, similar to a javelin, designed to be thrown rather than stabbed. The plummet stone would have been used in fishing. Experts aren't sure why there are two holes drilled into it, but it's been speculated that they might have been used to sharpen bone hooks. Turkey has been giving up almost as many fascinating artifacts as Egypt in recent times, and here's another incredible find. It's a badly broken statue of the former Roman Emperor Publius Alius Trianus Hadrianus, better known to the world as Hadrian. The fragments, which fortunately include a complete head, were found in the ancient city of Alabanda in Aydin. Experts believe the marble sculpture to be approximately 1,900 years old. It's unlikely to have been made here and was instead brought to Aydin in the year 120. It would once have stood eight feet tall, but only six chunks of it have been found thus far. We have the head and parts of the torso, but we're missing most of the limbs. 
The archaeologists think that this part of the old city was the Bulaturion, a sort of senate house where all of the region's important political business would have been carried out. Hadrian visited Anatolia several times during his reign between the years 117 and 138, so the statue was probably made to mark one of his visits or symbolized his affection for the city. This next story concerns not the original discovery of some ancient artifacts, but rather their recovery from criminals. In January 2021, Serbian authorities intercepted a Serbian man driving a car with Romanian license plates at the Srpska Srnja border crossing between the two countries. He claimed to be transporting goods from Ukraine, but when officials opened his truck, it was found to contain more than 2,000 ancient artifacts. The objects come from a variety of times and places covering the Byzantine era, the Bronze Age and the Middle Ages, and include several rare Celtic and Slavic items. Within the enormous hall, there are axes, maces, spears, bracelets, brooches, pendants, rings, and farming tools. The smuggler claimed to know nothing about the origin of the hall, stating only that he'd been paid a fee to drive the truck and didn't know what was inside it. That means it's going to be hard to say where the goods came from or how long they've been missing. Putting a price on all of this would be nearly impossible, but it's safe to say we're talking about several million dollars worth of stolen goods. In 1802, a vessel called the Mentor sank close to the Greek island of Kithira. It was owned by Thomas Bruce, a Scottish nobleman, also known as the Earl of Elgin. It was he who controversially took the Elgin marbles from the Parthenon, and it was this vessel that carried them. The wreck was found in 2011, and it's been visited repeatedly by marine archaeologists ever since. In February 2021, they reported the recovery of a new collection of artifacts. The hall includes belt buckles, coins, earrings, chess pieces, and most notably of all, a fine flintlock pistol. These objects were left behind when the Elgin marbles were retrieved and taken to England, where they remain today in the British Museum. The pistol is thought to have belonged to William Martin Leake, an artillery captain, diplomat, and antique expert who was aboard the vessel when it went down. A theodolite recovered, as part of the same expedition, is also thought to have belonged to him. There's still about 25% of the Mentor's hull intact at the bottom of the sea, so more artifacts might yet be found inside it. The discovery of the Gunnel Stargazer isn't recent, but the decision by an American court that it can stay in the United States of America is. With that chapter of the artifact's history behind it, it would be nice to solve the mystery of what it's supposed to be and who made it. Most experts concur that the sculpture is about 6,000 years old. It's a female Anatolian idol made from marble, one of just 15 known to exist in the world. The recent history of the object is murky, but the most commonly believed version of events is that Michael Steinhardt illegally looted it from Turkey in 1993. The name Stargazer comes from its distinctive pose. Its eyes are facing the sky, looking up at the heavens. It might represent a goddess of abundance that was worshipped in some parts of Turkey during the Chalcolithic era, but that's just a theory. What makes it unique is the fact it's still in one piece. Every other figurine like this that's ever been discovered has come in pieces because they were broken as part of some kind of ritual activity. We may never know why this one escaped that fate. The discovery of Thanos Heraklion in 2000 was the first major archaeological event of the new millennium, but we are still in the early stages of finding out what's there. The whole city is underwater, which makes exploring it quite difficult. Nobody knows why the Egyptian Greek port city sank, but the most popular theory is that it fell victim to a huge earthquake 2,200 years ago. In July 2021, divers from the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology discovered these incredibly well-preserved baskets of fruit inside a tumulus that was already around 200 years old when Thonis Heraklion sank. The baskets are too delicate to be opened, but scans and tests have revealed they're full of grape seeds and dome fruit. The reason they've been able to survive so well beneath the water is that when they were buried, they ended up underneath layers of burned material, thanks to a fire that was set atop them. 
probably on purpose as part of a burial ceremony. The tumulus was then sealed and stayed that way until the divers found it. Burying people with fruit and flowers is something we still do today, so this is a reminder that people who lived thousands of years ago may not have been all that different from us. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.